Hi, this is Captain Rutledge here. I thought I'd do a video commentary about, well, what is to date my most popular video, Top 10 Worst Arthur Episodes. For those of you wondering about the name Captain Rutledge, I'm not actually a real naval captain. In fact, I'm a lieutenant commander. Just, no, just kidding. It's sort of a homage to Bob Keeshan's character, uh, Captain Kangaroo, from the 60s and 70s. Ask your parents about it. Anyways, Arthur. What can you say about Arthur other than it being one of the most popular PBS kids shows of the 90s and 2000s? You know, even you know, still playing today, although it probably should um, be given retirement. And I decided to do a top 10 list about the worst episodes of the show because, you know, every Tom, Dick, and Sally has already done a whole bunch of videos about, oh yeah, it's great, it's perfect, and if I were to do something like that again, I'd just sound like a broken record. So I thought probably should focus on some of the least pleasurable aspects about the program. And so I just chose these uh, episodes by looking at other internet lists of what people thought, and also my own preferences for what I think are the worst lists. And, hmm, I guess we're starting off with the Crazy Bus episode. I think this episode is one of the most parodied of all online. You know, instead of playing Crazy Bus, I know a few YouTubers, they put in songs like uh, Taylor Swift or This Girl Is On Fire. Or there was even one that did an annoying um, beeping version of Crazy Bus from some video game that, that one of my friends pointed out to me. Anyhow, it's a really humorous episode. I, I don't hate it that much. It's just... It's just pretty annoying sometimes. Then like I do usually for some of these top 10 lists, I like to end off on a funny uh, clip from the episode. The, the funny clip I came up for here was when DW gets Crazy Bus the video and it says, more fun than a lighting fixture. I thought that should be a good way to end it. And of course all these title cards are actual ones from the episodes. I figured eh, that would be the best way to introduce them, rather than me just yammering off the title. Go to your room, DW. When I was a kid and this episode was on, it was pretty lackluster, in my opinion. Just DW complaining, first world problems, etc., etc., ad infinitum. In fact, a lot of these episodes on the list are related to DW. I think I made a joke in the episode that, oh yeah, these writers must have really big young, younger sibling problems. And that might be the case. They might have had extremely bratty four-year-old children or something like that. I, I, I myself had a younger brother growing up, but I doubt that he was ever as bad as D.W. was. Sure, he got on my nerves a lot, but that's about all I can say. Our parents were pretty strict disciplinarians for us. You know, not breaking the law, but just keeping us on the straight and narrow. Now, War of the Worms, I remember watching this, I thought, was Brain taking stupid pills? I th the Brain is a pretty much one-note character. I sometimes think the writers think, oh yeah, he's just the brains, he has no imagination. But I think that's pretty much besides the point. I mean, there are lots of very intelligent people out there with amazing imaginations, you know. I got a few cousins like that, but seriously, making brain just all facts, no imagination, it just goes against all good characterization of intelligent people. Anyhow, coming up on this one, A is for angry. Yeah, that's my real, uh, that's not a checkerboard, that's a chessboard I'm holding. I, there was no room in in the box where I keep my checker pieces, so I just used a fold-up chessboard for the scene. Anyhow, A is for angry. I remember this episode, and I thought, yeah, that is a good message. Sometimes people can get a little too overbearing when it comes to uh, uh, showing support, you know, even going full, full hatred against the uh, opposite, the opposing party. But here, it's for a gosh darn checkers tournament. And when I showed this video to my friends, they thought that I 
really edited this bit to have it repeating, but no, this was actually from the episode. Anyhow. Oh, jeez, Muffy. It's amazing that Muffy has had the same voice actor for the past 20 years. And the voice actor for Muffy, she started out doing the voice when she was, I think, early teens, uh, tweens, something like that, and she's still doing it today. Similar to Francine and all the other stuff. Oh yeah, my glasses got dirty. I just thought that would... I don't know why I put that in there. I just thought it would make me look... Oh, mm, oh this is such a terrible episode, something like that. But just like Go To Your Room DW, this episode, when it came on when I was a kid, it was just kind of boring. Oliver Frensky, he's he's a really nice character, you know. Just trying to teach Muffy that, hey, we're poor, can't have much of this stuff, but that doesn't mean we have to be miserable about it. Uh, and one scene with the limo arriving at the school, Francine actually walks all the way to school, but Muffy takes her limo and then... They arrive at the school at about the same time, and then Muffy comes out. Francine, how'd you make it this far? How did you survive? Turns out Francine's apartment is just about a block away. Okay, Arthur's big hit. I remember this episode quite a bit, and didn't think much of it as a child. I don't think much of it nowadays. And it's the one that spawned all the memes. All, every single meme on the internet. There comes the punch. It, actually, it is a good decision on behalf of the animators to not show Arthur actually hitting. But it's put together a sort of montage. The same here with the scene with Binky. It's just montage to make it look like Arthur or DW has been hit. And Mysterious Mr. Enter did do a good job explaining this episode on his uh, animated atrocities list, so that's why I included the link here. He also did a good explanation for DW's very bad mood in the same episode. I just went on talking about how DW is pretty much a psychopath, and someone in the comments for this video said, Yeah, but you know, four-year-olds, that's how they really are. They're all psychopaths. Okay, there's difference between being a four-year-old and being a complete psychotic four-year-old. Four-year-olds, yes, they're self-centered. That's obvious. However, it's the job of the parents to tell the children, Hey, the world does not revolve around you, and you need, you need to be more considerate of others. And I think that's not what the Reed parents are doing in this episode, hence why the SWAT team's coming in to arrest D.W. That was a super amazing clip from that episode. I had to include it. Anyhow. Oh, this one. Yeah, another commenter got me on this point. I said in the episode... I doubt they even took DW to visit a doctor. And she, and then the commenter said, uh, yeah, you're wrong. It, they did take DW to see the doctor. <laughs> Not my most proud moment. But um, I think I might have missed that in the, in the episode. But DW's symptoms last for weeks on end. If anything, the... I, sure, Mrs. Reed was busy with taxes, Mr. Reed was busy with his catering business, but the kid is sick, they could have taken her to the doctor, people would understand. But, no, they just have her fake everything. Again, another point about how the Reed parents need their parenting classes. And the next one on this list, I decided to do something like what uh, Josh Strider does for the Phantom Strider Top 5s, Top 10s, and whatnot, just to put in a surprise entry to make the list more, uh, what's the word, um, interesting, probably. So I put in Revenge of the Chip. I just, while going through the list of episodes, I thought, mm, this one is pretty harsh for DW. Now, Mrs. Reed completely exploits a small thing that her child did. Miss makes the child super embarrassed. It's amazing how some parents can be like this. They, even nowadays, you might see parents posting pictures of their kids online. Oh, this is so cute. Then in the future, oh, Mom, why did you do that? And if, another classic bit from the old series was when D.W. was embarrassed. She always put on her football helmet, which is what she, why she's wearing the football helmet here. 
Oh. In this clip, it's not that funny when you're a kid, but once you go through high school, it is completely hilarious. And now, the last episode. So funny I forgot to laugh. I decided there should be at least one uh, Flash Era episode on the list, and all the online folks were complaining about So Funny I Forgot to Laugh, so I gave it a view, and yeah, it is really one of the worst Arthur episodes. You know, Sue Allen has a funny sweater, and as it says, ha <laughs> shaped dog. It doesn't make a lot of sense, even though it's done by longtime showrunner Peter K. Hirsch. I think he might have been pressured into writing this episode against his wishes, so he just <laughs> pulled one out of his backside and said, here, just animate to it. I mean, you can understand Muffy or Francine being this mean to Sue Ellen. That's, that's in their nature. They've been that mean before. Especially Muffy, you know, with fashion and whatnot. Binky. Eh, not so much him. And... Seriously, Mr. Ratburn. He should have had a more harsher talk with Arthur, and probably include Sue Ellen on the conversation to teach uh, Arthur that what he's doing is really rotten. But on the whole, there are some much better flashier episodes that can be uh, shown, like the one with the hurricane, apart from Idina Menzel's character looking extremely creepy. That was a very well put together episode on the lines of April 9th. And um, also the Fountain Abbey episode was pretty entertaining. Then um, I think another flashier episode was um, the Halloween special. I thought that was really an excellent Halloween special for Arthur. But anyhow, that's all I have to say about the commentary for this episode. I'm glad that so many people watched this episode and enjoyed it, and they're probably going to ask, Cap, why aren't you going to do top ten best Arthur episodes? Well, like I said earlier, every Tom, Nick, and Sally has already talked about top ten best Arthur episodes. Praise for Arthur. It's going to make me sound like a broken record. I can do it sort of as the uh, Vox Pop uh, uh, ad lib video, but that's about the most I can take care of in that respect. And what surprised me the most is that two episodes on this list when PBS was doing the Arthur Marathon uh, last May, they had So Funny I Forgot to Laugh and Revenge of the Chip on the voting list. I never voted for those, for obvious reasons. I just voted for, I think, Mr. Rogers' episode, the one with Art Garfunkel, and then April 9th. Those were my top picks for the marathon on PBS. And I did tune into the marathon, and I thought that um, the ones they did choose for the top five episodes, yeah, those are good episodes to represent what Arthur is, and everything else about it. But I think I've overstayed my welcome on this commentary. Thanks everybody for watching and expect more in the future. Take care.